me. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of Dirty Math. My name is Matt, aka your Dirty Math teacher. Today we're going to be covering a Desmos activity called Will It Hit The Hoop? Now usually I talk about what you need to know before we get into the activity. For this particular activity, the math that we're covering is something called quadratic functions. It sounds fancy if this is the first time you're hearing about it, but you, you don't actually need to know quadratic functions to do this activity. The only thing you need is your ability to use a mouse with your finger. If you've ever asked the question, teacher, when are we ever gonna use this in real life? Well, this is kind of that moment. Now you're not really gonna use this math in real life because when you're shooting a basketball, you don't have the time to figure out whether or not it really is gonna go into the hoop. But today you're gonna be clicking and dragging and using quadratic functions and what's called parabolas to determine whether or not the ball that's being shot is gonna hit the hoop or it's gonna go into the hoop, that is. With all that said, I'm wasting time. This is a fun activity. Let's get to it. All right, welcome to the first screen, everybody. In this first screen, there's nothing particularly interesting. They ask you to create the best fit line. Now, all a best fit line is, is a line that kind of goes through as many of the points as possible. Now, this if you look at the points here, the little blue points, you'll see that it's kind of curved and you only get two black points. So, um, you, uh, let me see. If you just kind of like go to the middle, I mean, you just gotta kind of do your best with it, right? See, see if you can get it to touch maybe all the blue points, right? And um, once you do that, I mean, it, it's the best you, you're gonna do for, for now. And uh, let's click on next. So now we now that we've done that, um, it says here that the lines used, lines used to be the only kind of mathematical relationship we needed. Lots of models are linear. Now they're saying that because if this is your first time doing algebra, uh, before you even, before you ever get to anything resembling a quadratic formula or quadratic equations, you're only de dealing with lines, linear equations. And so, um, so far, you might have only dealt with lines. But lines are the wrong model here. Why is that? How does your line say will happen? What is your one? What does your line say will happen to the basketball? Well, if the basketball is going to follow the trajectory of the black line, it's just going to shoot straight into space. That's kind of awesome. But um, not really what happens in real life because there's something called gravity that pulls us all down to the ground. Uh, but in any case, um, you're gonna you're gonna write whatever you know whatever witty thing that you come up with uh, in the little box here and share with your class, right? Uh, I'm not gonna write it for you because too many of you end up copying my answers, um, and it looks weird in your math class if all of you have the same goddamn answer. So, um, so let's go to the next screen, shall we? Screen three. All right, so instead we need a relationship called a quadratic relationship, which is useful when problems involve gravity or area among other contexts. This activity is an introduction to the graphs of quadratic relationships. So uh, I'm gonna stop <laughs> reading this stuff for you because this is math class, not English class. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna try to make some predictions here, right? And, and I think the next series of screens, it's, it's kind of a long series of screens, we're gonna make some predictions. Now, this is, uh, this is not my first time doing it, but I am terrible at this. I, I, I don't remember which ones make it in the basket. I honestly don't. Um, and you'll see how terrible I am. And I'm not doing this on purpose either. I, I really am a bad judge of uh, where the basketball is going to fall. But um, here we go. Uh, shot one, predict. Press the play button and tell us what's your best guess. Does the ball go in or out? Okay, here we go. So it stops right in the middle. What do you think? I'm kind of looking at this and I'm thinking if it's right here, right? If it's, hmm, the, the basket's about right there. So uh, if, I think this will go in. I'm gonna say in, submit. Okay, so like I said, this is a long series. You're gonna, you're gonna do a bunch of these. So here's shot two. What's your best guess? Does the ball go in or out? And there you go. So again, um, Kind of goes all the way up here. I think this is a little bit far. I think it's gonna hit the back. Yeah, it's gonna hit the back. All right, so out. Submit. Okay, and it's important that you submit an answer. If you click on ahead without submitting an answer, um, it's not. There's nothing to compare. So please do sub click on submit as you as you go through these screens. Uh, shot three. What's your best guess? Does the ball go in or out? So obviously he's a little bit closer. And, he, and there's a little bit more of an arc here, 
Um, so it goes up, and I'm gonna say, ooh, I'm gonna say it goes in. Okay, uh, shot four, predict. Okay, shot four, more of the same. Uh, oh no, he's gonna be way short, out. Okay, uh, shot five. What's your best guess? Does the ball go in or out? Okay. Ooh, not much of an arc, kind of flat. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna say out. Okay, shot six. Okay, a little bit high, but it feels like that 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 apex right there, that the vertex of that um, of this parabola. It's called a parabola by the way. Um, if it's kind of too close to the basket, I'm gonna say out. Shot seven. Okay, looks like he's gonna underhand it. Uh, you know, underhand shots generally tend to go in. Um, and I, I know that's not mathematical in my reasoning, but um, with that said, I, I think it's a pretty good distance. So I'm gonna say in. Okay. Uh, okay, here's where things get interesting. We're actually gonna manipulate these uh, parabolas here using these two dots, these two black dots, and, and so we're gonna see, we're gonna, before we had to guess with our eyeballs to see whether or not this is gonna go in. This time we're actually gonna use, um, we're gonna use, you're gonna drag these points around, make make as good a parabola as we can given the, the drawing that they've given us and then go from there. So um, let's try this. I'm gonna, so it's pretty simple, right? It's pretty intuitive. If you, if you, uh, the general idea is if you take the, the left, the, the dot on the left and, and put it where the ball starts in his hand and then you take the the black dot on the right and you, you put it in the last kind of ball there it should match right or it kind of actually doesn't match so I'm gonna move it a little bit right I'm gonna move it a little bit now oh uh, man this is hard to tell I'm gonna say this goes in so previously you predicted the ball goes in so this is why I said it was important to click submit before because that way you, you'll have something to compare it in. And I, I think I was right the first time. So I'm gonna click on uh, that it goes in, given the parabola that I drew. But although right here, it does kind of look like it hits the back of the basket. I hate when that happens. Um, but yeah, you know what? I'm gonna say it goes out. I think it's gonna hit that back, right? I'm gonna say out. Oh man, I hope I'm not wrong. Okay, that'd be embarrassing, but actually no. I shouldn't say that. Um, as a math teacher, I actually do enjoy making mistakes. I actually purposely make mistakes in front of my classes um, just to take the edge off, right? Some people are so uh, scared of, of being embarrassed. Uh, and I get it. I mean, I just, that's what I just kind of made a comment about. But, um, but you know, that's how we learn. So uh, make mistakes, make as many mistakes as you can just so we can learn from them. Or at least that's what I try to do just so. I can save my students the embarrassment sometimes, but I digress. Uh, shot number two, let's try this again. Where, okay, so the ball kind of leaves his hand right here, and um, let's see, the apex is right there. Okay, so this is pretty clear, right? This thing is hitting the back, right? It's gonna bounce out. I'm gonna say out for this one too. Kind of makes me feel like the previous one is gonna was in. I'm gonna go, so the beauty of Desmos is that you can kind of change your answers. I'm gonna go back and say in. Okay, this one I set out. Okay, submit. Okay, 13, okay. We're on screen 13. Uh, the ball is in his hand right there. The apex is kind of, okay. The, this is actually not the apex, but I see right there. So it goes through every ball. Kind of hits that back again. I'm gonna say out. So I, I said um, more outs than in. Shot number four, let's see, the ball is gonna be right there. The apex is gonna be right about there. Oh, that one's clearly short. And I think I said that it was short before in, in my prediction, so in my eyeball prediction. Let's see, out. Shot five, okay, so the ball is right there. And then um, I think I said this is kind of far in. If I, if I remember correctly from my comments, it, it kind of hits the back again. Another out, okay. Uh, shot number six. Okay, okay, there's, um, ooh, hold on. My 
There's something wrong. I, there's not. It's not going through as many points as I thought it would. Okay, so right about there. Okay, that that looks good. Oh, that's gonna. Ooh, that might bank in. Ooh. This is tough. It might bank in. I'm gonna say in. That banks still count, right? Um, I predicted that one was gonna go out, but I'm gonna say it's gonna bank in. Change my opinion there. Okay, so he's underhanding the ball. Let's put it kind of as as close to the center of that ball as possible, and then the apex is right about there. Yeah, I think that's going in. That's gonna be a swish. See in. Okay, so let's see the answers first. Do you have more confidence in your predictions or your parabolas? Um, so what, the, what they're asking is, are you more confident in your eyeball prediction when you're just kind of eyeballing the, the, traje the trajectory of the ball or when you actually had the tool of being able to draw a parabola? I would say parabola, right? That makes me feel a little bit better um, because you can kind of, it, it's a little bit more mm, accurate, I guess. Um, to, to tell you uh, where the ball is going to be instead of just kind of, you know, just guessing with your eyeball. So I'm going to say parabolas. Explain your thinking. Um, I kind of said it. You can say whatever you want here. Um, if you think predictions are better, um, by all means, you, you know, write, write it there to your teacher and let them know how you feel. But um, I'm going to let you write whatever answer you need to so you don't copy mine. It's not that kind of dirty math. Okay, shot one, verify, here we go. Uh, I predicted that the ball goes in and the parabola analysis said the ball goes in. So I said uh, that it's gonna go in twice, right? Both times, so let's see. Yes, he did make it. So, uh, eyeball one, parabola one. All right, next screen. Here we go, I said out, ooh, okay. I said out both times, so my prediction and my parabola came out to be the same. Let's see. Yep, just like I thought, it hit the back, uh, that back part of the rim and just kind of bounced out. I hate when that happens. Shot number three, I said in, when my, oh, this is interesting. My eyeball said in, the parabola said out. Oh, it's gonna be right. Not what I expected. Um, math, <laughs> the whole point of this is to prove that math is more accurate and my eyeball was more accurate. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, I forget, I, I should rewind and, and see what I said for, for shot number three, but I think I, I, I predicted that it would hit the back and, and kind of pop out, but uh, sometimes you win some, you lose some. Okay, shot number four. I said both that they would go out. Yep, that was pretty clear. I mean, it was pretty obvious both with the eyeball and with the parabola that it was gonna be short, so. Shot number five, I've said both out. Okay, so far I'm pretty, oh, it. Okay, he banked it in. I thought it was gonna be too far, but he, he banked it off the backboard and into or and, ba and off the front of the rim and in. Okay, so we're both off. Okay, eyeball and math is wrong. Oh boy. Okay, what am I teaching here? Okay, shot number six. I predicted that the ball goes out with the eyeball, and the parabola analysis that the ball goes in. I think I said this one would bank, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong, but let's see. Let's see what he does. me F me F <laughs> all my predictions are correct my eyeball predictions are correct and all my math predictions are wrong which isn't the point right I, I we'll have to have a discussion on what's going on here afterwards all right shot seven here is the answer okay in, in. okay i said both would go in um yeah that was pretty obvious it was going to go in all right so, class results. Now, if you do this as a class, your your uh, bar graph here will be a lot more interesting. Um, as far as mine go, right? 
more predictions were correct, my more eyeball predictions were correct than parabola predictions, which uh, I think isn't really supposed to happen. So your mileage may, your mileage may vary. Um, your class might be very, very different. Um, I think the big takeaway from from this activity that you're you're watching me do on Dirty Math is that the sample size is too small. So uh, guess what, folks? I, I told you we're talking about quadratic functions here today, but uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a statistics and probability lesson here. Our sample size is too small. So uh, I think that's what happened here. If you want to know what sample size is, go ask your teacher or go watch a Khan Academy video. All right, extensions, we'll spend more time talking about... Uh, okay, so there's more extension questions that come afterwards. If you stop here, that's fine. But um, let's let's do the extension questions just because uh, we, we want to stretch our knowledge a little bit. So going on here, extension number one, approximately how tall is the shooter? Oh, wow, that's an interesting question. Um, I actually don't remember this. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've done this activity and I didn't recall this, but okay. So, um, by the way, if you don't know who this is, this is Dan Meyer. He's the chief academic officer at Desmos. So, um, way before Desmos was ever a thing, or maybe it was a thing, but way before uh, Dan Meyer joined Desmos, he was actually doing this. So, uh, making videos and, and doing interesting things like this. So, let's see if. So, the graph tells us that this is ten. The 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 hoop is ten feet high. So he's about one, two, three, four, five. So he's, every line is about two feet. So I would say he's about six feet tall. Uh, in reality, he's taller than six feet. So um, write whatever you want, but more than six feet is what I would say. Did you have a snack? Oh no! Oh no! Mama left! All right, we're on screen 29. So what are the co uh, coordinates of the basketball hoop and what does it say about the hoop? Now, ooh, uh, I kind of lied. You do need some knowledge of coordinate points here. So let's let's talk about the coordinates of the basketball hoop. Now remember, this is your x-axis and the up and down is your y-axis. And so let's see, the x-axis from from where he's standing to right here, it's about, I would say, every, every what is this, every two points is, or every, uh, every Line is about two feet, two, four, six, eight. So he's about 18 feet. The, he's about 18 feet away from the front of that hoop. Um, and then about 10 feet up. So the coordinates are gonna range for anywhere from 18 to 20 uh, for your X value and uh, 10 feet for your Y value. So 18 comma 10, 19 comma 10, 20 comma 10 uh, are gonna be common answers. If you wanna be, um, if you want to be a smart aleck about it and you want to say exactly 19 comma 10 or 18.5 comma 10 or something like that you can do that i guess um but i will let you write your own answers there and last but not least um screen 30 the equation of the quadratic relationship so they actually give you the equation of this quadratic relationship here and so the equation that references the coordinates 10.76 and 14.8. Uh, what is the significance of those coordinates? Well, if you just go ahead and look where that is on the graph, 10.76, so it's a little bit after 10, so not quite 11, but all, like, close to closer to 11 than 10. And if you go up to 14.8, that should tell you something about which part of the parabola uh, that coordinate is referring to. And we call that the apex call it the apex now um, I hate to give away the answer and so uh, math teachers forgive me uh, because I am a math teacher and, and I, I hate to just give away answers to students but if you get stuck on this uh, this is why you're actually here right this is why you're at dirty math so the sig significance of those coordinates is that it, it's the vertex of, uh, of that parabola this is it for yet another episode of Dirty Math. If you enjoyed this particular activity or this video helped you out in your math class or you know, we're all distance learning and your teacher might have assigned you this and this was just your way of getting through this activity, leave me a like, subscribe, comment, do whatever you need to. Although I don't know why you would subscribe to a math channel, but thanks for watching and have a nice day.